You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. This is Michelle Fern, host of Best Bets for Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All right, you want to listen to this show. This is a such a unique idea that you'll think, why didn't I think about that? It's a great idea for anyone that has a dog. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsor. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. It's dinner time in America, where more pet parents trust PetSmart for natural and expert recommended foods than any place else. And now, we've added more than 100 new varieties to our already wide selection of your favorite brands, like Simply Nourish, Authority, Wellness, Science Diet, and more. Do what's best for your pet. At PetSmart, happiness in store. Go to PetSmartDeal.com to find out this week's coupon code and save up to 30% on food, treats, toys, and more. And get free shipping on orders of $49. Go to PetSmartDeal.com. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. Let's talk pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, pet parents. I'd like to introduce Kate Hillman. She is the founder and inventor of Piddle Place. Welcome, Kate. Thank you so much, Michelle. Glad to speak to you today. Well, I'm so happy to have you on the show. Now, for everybody that's listening, they're probably thinking, what is a Piddle Place, the Piddle Place? What's Piddle Place? So how about, let's tell them, what is Piddle Place? The Piddle Place is an indoor uh, dog relief system, a pet relief system for dogs and cats. And it's not meant to replace walking your dog, but just for times when you can't be there to let your dog out. And I came up with it because I was a nurse and working at the hospital, I changed my shift from an eight-hour shift to a 10-hour shift. And Kippers couldn't wait for me to get home and walk her. And she went tinkled on the floor and was very upset at herself. And it was my fault. So I started using puppy pads. And they were really disgusting. She'd drag them around the house, chew them up, and she'd walk off of them. Her paws were wet. Every once in a while, she'd drag them and go bring one over to my visitor that was used. So we decided that wasn't a very good idea either. So as a nurse, I wanted to come up with something that was environmentally friendly and sanitary, that you had no contact with pet waste and had no odor. Now, for everybody that's out there listening, how would you describe it? I mean, it looks like a patch of lawn, but there's more detail than that. Yeah, it's really different. It's only about an inch and a half tall, and it, but it holds a gallon of pet waste. It's disgusting to think about, but it does. But how it works is it has a bioenzyme that you open and pour in the base. You mix it with a cup of water and pour it in the base, and it'll break down the, the pet waste and neutralize odor for a whole week. And then it has a pad that's real porous. It's made of PVC, so it's machine washable as well. But when the dog goes to the bathroom on it, everything goes straight through and down into a bottom chamber where it's isolated and treated with the bio treatment. And then just once a week, you put the lid down on the toilet and take it over to your own bathroom and open the valve and drain it. So you really are never coming in contact with pet waste. There's things in the market that look similar, but they're really just pads that sit down in the, the pet waste directly itself, or you have to open up a little box and walk around your house with an open container of urine looking for a place to dump it out at. So it's very different. Yeah, you know, when we think about it, as far as for different types of ways that pedal place can be used, it's kind of, there's a lot of places or, or needs for it. But before we get into that, it's kind of unique because it's it's not just, I've seen other ones, other pet relief systems. They're basically just a patch of grass and maybe something underneath or what looks like a patch of grass. And there's nothing underneath. You can't enclose it. It's easy to spill. I once tried one and it was... Okay, I'm a little klutzy and it's sloshed and that's disgusting to think about uh, what happens. I won't go into 
<laughs> going to that story. But this is so easy. It's so easy. It doesn't smell. For everybody listening, it even comes with a little 3D kind of, uh, not 3, well, a little border. So that for the male dogs that lift up the legs that have bad aim, there you go. You're covered. It has a three, what was it, about a halfway around little border. Yeah, it's called a protective guard, and it's they're, they're cute. That's actually one of the products that goes with it, that we have different designs. We have ones with dogs running through a field, with dogs looking over a fence. I have one at home that I hate to say, but it actually has a face of my ex-husband on it. But the dogs lift their leg on that, and, it, and it's made of plastic, so that it can also be sprayed, and everything is directed right back down into the base unit where it's treated with the same bioenzyme, and it neutralizes the odor. Okay, and for everybody listening out there, now, Kate, your background, you're a nurse, right? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Now I have a family member. Actually, my sister is a nurse, and what I know about nurses is they are always very sensitive to any kind of germs because you're a nurse and you deal with you know germs and all that kind of stuff all the time. So I know you know Piddle Place, designed by a nurse, it's going to be as safe you know all the germs contain as possible. Exactly. And that, that was the main need of it, just to eliminate the odor, the contact with pet waste, and the bioenzyme that then neutralizes and breaks down the pet waste. So that, that was our goal, to try and have something that's clean in your home, that when you walk in, you don't have that odor hit you in the face, and it looks good sitting in your house as well. Now, is Piddle Place okay? Well, now, we know it's good for number ones, and usually dogs, they can hold the number twos, but it's the number ones that really they need to go sometimes a few times a day. What about if the dog does number two on this? They all do. Thank you for asking. That's great. Because, yes, the dog does poop on it, too. And when they do, it's the PVC mat. It's designed very different than the other ones that look like grass where it has a, a drying agent in it that pushes the, the dog number two ways right back up to the surface. So you just lift it up like if you walk your dog, it dries out very quickly. The other ones that are on the market, they look like blades of grass. And when the dog goes number two in there, everything sort of accumulates and sticks in those blades of grass and you pull it out and you may as well throw the whole thing away. So it is very different design for, for that. And most dogs, dog owners that we sell to tell us that the dogs do both on it. Okay, now, I could think of a a lot of people. I mean, if someone's in a condo, if someone's, you know, even if someone's having surgery and they're going to have limited movement, or if they have limited movement, or, I mean, I could just think of, you know, weather conditions, so many reasons and places and ideas where Piddle Place would be fantastic. Now, the one thing I could think of, though, does having the Piddle Place in your house, would that cause your dogs to maybe go do a little piddle someplace else other than a piddle place? What is your experience with that? No, it's not because the dog, we train all the dogs and we come with pretty good instructions. So the dog wants to be clean and they don't want to, you know, go hide behind the sofa and tinkle. So as long as you train the dog properly that this is your place, the dog will learn to use it for both. And my dog, when I'm home, I take my dog out for walks. And when I'm not home, she has a piddle place inside. So she learns to use both. And a lot of people tell me the same thing that, you know, this has been a horrible winter here in the United States where people didn't want to take their dogs out. My friend said, you know, the dachshund's walking through the snow and his privates are dragging in the snow and he was very upset. So they were able to have a piddle place for the winter months and then when the sun came out, they take the dog for a walk. So the dogs learn to do both. And it, I never understood why, you know, you could, people think you just have to walk your dog because sometimes it's very uncomfortable for the dog and they wind up going to tinkle on the carpet in the kitchen or something like that. So by allowing the dog an option, it allows them a bit more freedom rather than just being on our time clock. So if you're late from work or you're stuck at, you know, in traffic or tied up at the hospital emergency department, your dog has an option other than the kitchen carpet. And why is it, I mean, I know that you're not, your background is not veterinarian, but in your experience with Piddle Place, my personal view and from what I've learned from just my personal, my, my dogs and talking to my vet, is that it's not really good for a dog to hold it and it does become more difficult with older dogs to you know hold it especially number you know ones because number twos they're normally walked like twice a day at least so it's not as bad but what is your experience with dogs holding it oh definitely it's puppies and when people buy their puppy initially same thing then little dogs have little bladders and people would say well i just don't give my dog water during the day so he so that 
so he doesn't, you know, pee on the carpet. And rather than just allowing your dog the water and a piddle place, and, you know, the vet told me dogs would get bladder infections and become very stressed out if they're forced to hold their urine more than, you know, uh, that nature would allow. And older dogs, I had a dog before Kipper, Dudley, who got old and incontinent, and he used to stick his head out the dog door and, you know, tinkle on the floor. And so we'd know because he couldn't get through the dog door anymore. So he was a lot more comfortable, and he took to it right away. So it was a simple switch. It was much more comfortable for the dog who just, you know, during the night sometimes he would cry to go out because he couldn't wait all through the night. So you're right. As dogs get older, and some a lady told me yesterday her dog couldn't get down the stairs anymore, and she was having to carry him up and down the stairs. So this is perfect. There is a lot of good places and ideas for it. And you also mentioned that you have a great YouTube video that explains all about Piddle Place, but it's also good if you have an RV or a boat. Oh, yes. People that travel on the boats, they tell us these times to go find an island to stop and let their dog off to walk, or they travel, like you say, in RVs. And it's small enough that it fits in the trunk of your car if you're traveling. And when I travel with kippers, I, you know, I stay at pet-friendly hotels, and I have her little crate that I bring with her in her piddle place. So while we're in the hotel room, she feels more comfortable just knowing that she has a place to go. And people tell me they bring them on the airplane with them because it can fit into the overhead. People have service dogs. They bring their dogs on the plane. And like you say, in RVs as well, it makes it much more comfortable to travel with your pet. Such a great idea. And if somebody, you know, is in a high rise, most, a lot of, you know, condos and high rises do have, a lot of them have terraces, not all. But you could even put it right outside or right on the terrace if you just couldn't physically at certain times based on weather conditions what have you go outside and walk your dog you could just the dog can just go on the terrace too oh exactly michelle i have customers that tell me that as well that they actually walk their dog out to the terrace now they put a leash on them and it's cold outside so they just walk them out to the fiddle place on the terrace or just open the slider and out they go and do their business and come right back in Now, there's another reason that Piddle Place is such a great idea. And in your information that you shared with me earlier, most people, when they're adopting dogs, their frustration at being able to keep the dog and take care of the dog is because of housebreaking issues. And the Piddle Place really helps with that. What is your experience with this? Yes, exactly. We volunteer at the shelter, and the number one reason that people bring their dogs in to be euthanized or to give them away or just abandon them is because of housebreaking issues. And as you were saying earlier, Michelle, some little dogs have little bladders or older dogs that can't hold it anymore. So this is a perfect solution to encourage adoption. And people used to bring their dogs to the, the shelter, and we'd say, hey, you know, try this the piddle place for a while instead, and if it works out for you, you can keep your dog, and everybody can be a lot, lot happier that way. And at the shelters themselves, we actually donate quite a few piddle places to shelters. And Dr. Becker, Marty Becker, had shared with me that, you know, when people drop their dogs off at the shelter, a lot of times the shelter doesn't have enough help to walk the dogs as often as they should. And the dogs wind up, you know, peeing in their crates and laying in it. And that's so unnatural for them. And they learn worse habits and then become unadoptable. So we donate them to the shelter. And the way the piddle place is designed, you could attach a garden hose to it if you didn't want to open the valve drain, and you can just leave it open. And so they put them in the runs at the shelters, as do veterinary offices and daycare, doggy daycares. And the dog can go to the bathroom. It just runs down a central drain, and they're a lot more comfortable. And then when they adopt the dog, they say, hey, the dog's already learning to use this piddle place, and it makes the dog more adoptable that way. What a great idea. And speaking of Dr. Marty Becker, congratulations, because at the end, International and largest ever this year, Global Pet Expo 2014, Piddle Place won an award. Yes, thank you. We won one of the Becker's Best, as it's called, uh, one of the 10 best new products in the show. So we're very pleased with that. And that is even a bigger feat this year because the show was the largest ever. They had an open, I was lucky enough to be there. It was huge. It was, I think they had about maybe a couple hundred more vendors than normal. It was just huge this year. So congratulations. That is quite an honor. That it was really wonderful to be there and meet so many people and have all veterinary physicians come by and speak to us and pet shop owners that were carrying the Piddle Place tell us about their success with it and people had actually used it for their own dogs. So that really made me very happy just to hear the positive feedback as I'm getting from you. Thank you. Oh, so welcome. Now, lastly, for everybody listening, Piddle Place can also be used for cats. But how would that compare with a litter box? It's actually easy to train a cat, and we have videos online to work with that. 
But once again, you know, cat urine smells much worse than dog urine. But the bioenzyme we have also neutralizes the cat urine, and you never have to buy kitty litter again. So to train the cat, we just put a little handful of kitty litter on top of the piddle place, and the cat, you know, take away their litter box, and they'll scratch at it and use it. And then the next day, you take away the kitty litter and just leave the piddle place, and they've learned to use it. It's a really fast learning process for cats. The only problem where we've had cat feedback where it's been a problem is in houses that have multiple cats. For some reason, um, one cat will use it, and then maybe if they have three cats, the third cat won't use it. So we tell people it's really for a, kind of a one-household cat. And that's a good savings because then you don't have to deal with the litter box or putting the litter, you know, dumping the litter and changing all that and the cost of it and that whole mess. Oh, and the smell also. And it's great because you can leave it, whether it's a cat or a dog, you know, rather than have, my, I know Kippers, she likes, she, you know, I used to have to go away on the weekends or work or have to go to a conference. I used to have to take her to, a, you know, a doggy daycare and she would pout and she'd rather be in her own house with her toys and her comfortable environment. So now I know if I'm just gone for the night, I can leave Kipper and her food and water and her piddle place and her toys and chew toys and she's happy as can be rather than have to go to the kennel. So and same with cats. If you're gone for, you know, a couple of days, you don't come back to that horrific odor when you come back in the home. What a great idea. Now, Piddle Place is a great product. It is so different. For everybody listening out there, you have to check out the YouTube videos and just see this in action. It's really, it's just really cool. It's just such a great idea. Now, Kate, for everybody that's out there listening, where can they get Piddle Place? At PiddlePlace.com, which is P-I-D-D-L-E. P-L-A-C-E dot com. Uh, that's our own website. We have a toll-free number on there. You can order right from the website if you'd like. You can order it on Amazon. I think Brookstone has it. There's a lot of online stores right now. We're pretty new. But in different countries, we have distributors now in Australia and Canada through Burgum and in Singapore and Thailand and Mexico. So if, even if they call our 800 number or email me through the website, I can let them know where's the best place in their town that they can go look at one, and touch it and feel it and get a better idea for what they're, they're about to purchase. And listeners, as always, there'll be a picture of Piddle Place and some information as well as a link to the website on this segment of the episode. So you can go to Pet Life Radio, click on Best Bets for Pets, and you will see the information there under the episode for Piddle Place. Kate, I just want to thank you so much for coming on Best Bets for Pets and telling all the listeners about Piddle Place. Thank you so much. What a great product. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks to all your listeners. Appreciate the time. And thank you for all the wonderful information you always share with all of us. I look forward to hearing your show. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank my testers, Mr. Z and Nikki, for doing their number ones and number twos on Piddle Place. Great job, guys. They really had a great time using Piddle Place. And it was so easy. And it was just fantastic. We're just going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Sit. Day. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Dogs leave fur wherever they go. It collects all over the home. There are many tools designed to stop dog hair spreading, but their effectiveness varies, and afterwards you have to clean the tool, then the floor. With the Dyson Groom Tool, you simply deploy the bristles, then gently brush the coat. Loose fur is removed, while dead skin and allergens are captured by the vacuum. And to clean up, you simply release the trigger. To get this awesome Dyson Groom Tool, go to DysonDeals.com. That's DysonDeals.com. Hi, this is Jody Miller-Young from Bark and Swagger. Tune in for everything pet fashion and more. From fashion tips and runway trends, products and designs I love, to fabulous home decor for your furry friend, you'll find it all here. Be the first to discover the new. So what are you waiting for? Find me on Pet Life Radio. And remember, when fierce fashion calls, bark and swagger. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. Now, this next product is so cool. It's such a great idea. So, you know, you're going to go, oh, why didn't I think about that? That is so great. So cool. And my dog needs that. 
I am so excited to introduce Hope Adams. She is the inventor and owner of Dog Sport. Welcome, Hope. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Now, for everyone that's listening out there, what is Dog Sport? Dog Sport is a water bottle cap for dogs that fits most standard water bottles. Basically, you just twist your water bottle cap off, twist this Dog Sport on wherever you are. This way, while you're out and about with your dog, you can give them water. It has a ball, and it bobs, spins, and rolls. And in the ball, there's actually little mini sand traps to keep water on the ball as long as possible, so you can really hydrate your animal. Now, first, how'd you come up with the idea for dog sport? Okay, um, I actually have a dog. His name is Handsome, and I used to live in Manhattan. As soon as we would leave the house, he'd be thirsty. So we'd have to stop at the nearest deli. I'd have to buy a bottle of water and then be like, do you have a cup? He would take two licks. I'd then have to take the water from the cup pour it back in the bottle so we had water for later, and I would get it everywhere. I'd always miss that little space. I was, my, everything, my bag would be wet. It was just messy, and I, just, I really needed to create this product. I needed to make my life easier, and that's when I thought of it. For everybody that's listening out there, I mean, there's, it's basically, you could just twist it onto a, a water bottle, and instead Correct. of just, you know, pouring out the water, there's um, a ball. It's kind of like what's on some types of, like a rollerball perfume. It's like a rollerball. It's on, it looks similar to like what's on, yeah, it looks similar to like, well, everybody that's listening, to give you a visual idea, um, it looks like, if or deodorant that has that little rollerball at the top. It's, it's a band it's, roll on. Yeah, like it's very similar to that. And it's so easy. The dogs, I mean, Mr. Z and Nikki had no problem testing it out. The dentist, who's a cat, he tested it out too. <laughs> he had no problem, even though cats, he does drink water, the dentist, so. You know, it is water bottles. When animal and dogs see a water bottle, they already know that that's water. That would have been hard. But now they already recognize the water bottle. They know it's in there. They don't like to get squirted, though. That they hate. So when you twist your water bottle cap off and you twist this on and then you put it in front of your cat, your dog, they see that, you know, they're not getting, you know, squirted in their face. You touch the ball, you, you know, your finger's wet, then you maybe touch it with their mouth and then they know, oh, it's water. You put it there. Then they start licking the ball. It bobs, spins and rolls and they really get into it. And if it was just a smooth ball, water really wouldn't stay on the ball, you know, but because there are little mini sand traps in the ball, water stays on the ball as long as possible. And as well, you know, besides that, you could, if you have a big dog, you could even squeeze the water bottle and you could monitor how much water comes out. So if you're a little Yorkie or a little pet, a little dog who just licks the ball and then that's plenty of water from them, that's great. But say you have a golden retriever or, you know, a, a shepherd or whatever it is, like me, a Wheaton Terrier, you know, you could squeeze the ball. You squeeze the water bottle, which will then, you know, water will, will flow a lot greater. You know, first... Mr. Z, who's the more timid, well, actually, Nikki, too, they were, you know, like, what is this? And yeah, they did back away a little bit thinking, am I going to get water all over me and it's going to drip <laughs> in my face and that kind of thing. But then, you know, they tried it out and had no problem. They had no problem at all, you know, trying it out and, and using it. And I mean, what, when you get a regular water bottle and try to squirt it, most of it ends up on the floor. My dog runs. So, and it, it's just a waste, and it could be an expensive waste depending on where you bought the water. And so, messy. And yeah. then your car smells nosily. It's, it's all over the place. Exactly. Now, would it also work if you were to put it on a water bottle and hold the water you know, bottle maybe upside down if it, you had an animal where you just wanted to have water for them all the time? Could you do that too, or it's not really meant for that? Yes, absolutely. At Christmas time, we, we are coming out with another attachment, basically, where it will be able to just sit by itself. And it's not exactly upside down, but it's more of like a, like a diagonal angle so that the dog can go to the water bottle without you holding it for them and get water especially if they're in a cage and, you know, or wherever, you know, wherever you're not in your car. I could also think of it as a great idea for, because in a crate, a lot of times when dogs are crate trained, they'll make a mess and the water gets spilled and all over the place. Oh, they step on their water, flips the whole bowl over and they have no water. I know, I know. Some people, what they'll do is just say they won't have water for their dogs, which I think is a mistake because especially puppies, you need to have water for them, for all dogs. So the idea of, you know, you put the dog's board on a water bottle, have it at an angle, and there's many ways you can maneuver things in a crate to attach. And there your dog has water. The dog will have water the whole time. It won't get spilled out. It won't become a mess and it won't disappear. It'll, you know, what a great idea. Thank you so much. But I also want to tell you, there's something called bloat. Bloat, 
um, if you Google it, it's actually the second largest cause of death in dogs in our country. What happens is people, they take their dogs out for a spin, they, they just don't give them water, and they become so dehydrated that when they finally get some water, they drink it so fast, so furiously, and basically, unlike us, it doesn't register to their brain that they're not that thirsty anymore, and then they drown themselves. And that's called bloat, and this product totally prevents that from happening. Wow, I didn't even know about that. I mean, is that something that happens frequently with dogs that they would they drown themselves? Like, actually, it's the second largest cause of death. You know, death in dogs in this country. Wow, it's called bloat. And you know, having this product also there's a hole in the key in the uh, cap. Just so you know, there's a hole in the caps you get attached to your keychain, so you always can have it on you. I mean, I don't want to leave the house without it. Really, I mean, I know it sounds crazy. My dog's always thirsty. He's a big guy. It's really hot out. I live in Los Angeles now. This week is even a heat wave. I mean, within five minutes of us walking, he's panting. It's not in the greatest shape. <laughs> but, you know, he is thirsty, and this product is so convenient. It makes your life so much easier. And you actually enjoy being out and about with your dog without having to stress it with the water. And how, many, how is he going to you know, stay hydrated? This is just the easiest thing. You're not sharing your water with your dog. But if you want to buy a bottle of water, you could drink half of it, and then, you know, you'll give your dog the rest. Right, because this it isn't really meant to, to you know, put this on. It is not meant to be shared. To share, right. right. Because there's water that goes in there. It does come back into the bottle from the cap. And you don't want to drink doggy germs as much no, as we love our that's dogs. One thing. You could drink, take a few, you could take your own, you know, take a few swigs, drink a quarter of it, whatever it is that you need. And then you could, you know, put your dog sport on it. And now it becomes your dog's water. Now, it comes with two different size screw on pieces. Uh, yes. It actually, there's two size water bottles. Your standard neck size, which is like a Pepsi size, like, you know, um, like the regular, you know, cap that would be on a Coke or a Pepsi. And then now I'm sure you see they have the short neck to conserve plastic, like on a lot of these uh, water bottles, like Dannon. So there's two size water bottles. So if it doesn't fit on one size, you just twist the bottom piece off and it will fit on the other. So there's an attachment that twists on and twists off. So depending on what size bottle you're, you know, you're using. And then there's also a little cap that comes on it. It looks like a little baseball cap for the ball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that's the cap actually that has a hole in it. So you can attach it to your keychain. And that cap keeps the ball clean this way, you know, when you throw your, your water bottle in your purse, you know, whatever that, you know, your makeup, whatever it is you may have, you know, or if you're a guy, you want to, you know, put it in your pocket, it just stays clean and it doesn't get everything else wet. Everybody that's listening is probably, you know, I need to get this. This is a really great idea. Where can we find Dog Sport? Well, I would love for you to go to our website. It's dogsportusa.com. That's dogsportusa.com. And you can purchase your Dog Sport there. Okay, wonderful. You know, I just know that when you try it, you're going to be so happy. Your dog's going to be thrilled. It's something that they're going to, you need, they need, and it just makes life easier. And I really appreciate everything. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you calling me and talking to me and everything. I'm really excited about this. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. I'd like to thank my guest, Hope, for being on Best Bets for Pets and telling us all about dog sport. And for my listeners, for listening, this is a really cool product. It's so important to keep your dogs hydrated. You have no idea. And this is just, it's really cool. It's easy for the dogs to drink of. They get the water and it's so convenient. It's just, you know, twist a cap off, put a cap on. Very easy for your dogs to use. And I'd like to thank my testers, Mr. Z and Nick. Nikki, they had a lot of fun trying out dog sport. And the dentist, he's a cat, but he liked it too. So for those that have cats that do drink water, which is important, your cat might be able to handle it also. But it's really important for dogs because normally we'll do, a lot of times we take dogs with us and there's not sufficient water. Or if you're at the dog park, there's the murky dog bowl that's disgusting that every dog drinks out of. Get dog sport. You don't need to do that. Who knows what infections and stuff are in those bowls from, you know, multi dogs sharing. Ew, a lot of germs. So get dog sport. Um, you can find out more about dog sport and see a picture of the product on this segment of the episode. And I would like to thank my producer, Mark Winter, for making me and my guests sound great. And I would like to thank all of my listeners, all the pet parents out there, pet parents-to-be that are listening. Thank you so much. There's a lot of great shows you can download all the time. Or if you're listening to live stream, you can go to PetLifeRadio.com. Just go to the Best Bets for Pets tab. And there's tons of shows, a lot of great products, great ideas for you to listen to. You can find out more on my Twitter account for the show, Michelle Fern or Best Bets for Pets, and also on Facebook. 
Thank you so much for listening. Keep listening for more great shows. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.